Hello, it's Michael Watts here, and I'm on the riverbanks in Durham, where I grew up. Uh, for this video, it's going, certainly going to help me to walk and talk and think at the same time. Uh, motion is crucial, I find, for, for these kinds of moments. Um, I'm looking today at the creative process, uh, writing music for the solo steel string guitar. Uh, I'd put the call out a, a month or so ago and uh, asked what you might like to see more of. The, the response itself was overwhelming and it was also uh, overwhelmingly weighted towards looking at behind the scenes. As one sadistic bastard put it, the, the blood and the tears of the, uh, the writing process. Well, you asked for it, uh, here it comes. Uh, I've decided to talk about one recently completed piece as a, as a sort of a case study and we'll look at it from the very first spark through to the finished composition. In this case, it's a tango. And that's not something that, uh, <laughs> that's not something that I would have seen myself saying uh, a year or so ago. I know absolutely nothing about the tango. It's not uh, part of my musical palette. Um, I'm a complete tango novice. Uh, so this came as, uh, as you can imagine, as a bit of a surprise. Um, the spark, of this piece of music uh, came in uh, December of last year uh, in Stoke Newington, the home of the tango, as, as many of you know. Uh, I was in a pub waiting for my dear friend Clive Carroll. Um, 20 years beforehand, I'd lent uh, Clive my charango. Uh, for the uninitiated, the charango is uh, an Andean stringed instrument. It's got 10 strings to it. And traditionally, and, and troublingly, um, they were made out of scooped out armadillo shells. Uh, Mine is mahogany, which is, um, I think sounds a lot nicer. Uh, so, I uh, had a lovely time catching up with uh, Clive over a couple of pints of Guinness. Next thing I know, I'm back home and I've got my triangle with me. Now it's at this point in proceedings that the more strategically minded of you will be thinking, well, okay, Clive Carroll, pints of beer, that's all very well, Watts, but surely it's irresponsible to uh, advocate a compositional system that relies so heavily on the sporadic retrieval of Andean stringed instruments. And you're right, but this is just a case study. My first album, Vetiver, closed with a, uh, a piece for solo ukulele, ukulele nocturne. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking, would it be possible to maybe repeat that process with uh, a piece for solo charango. This was just a, uh, a pipe dream at that point. I tuned the charango as it's supposed to be tuned, which is uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but it's a re-entrant tuning of some kind, which suggests much like the strummed ukulele, that this is a, an instrument for uh, rasguado rhythm playing rather than, than solo uh, fingerstyle. Um, and that, was born out when I searched on YouTube to see the sort of thing that, uh, that charangos are generally used for. So you'll understand my dismay at this point. Uh, I don't have the 10,000 hours necessary to, to dedicate to, to getting that kind of facility on, on an unfamiliar instrument. So I did what I think anybody would do uh, in this situation. I cheated um, and I retuned the charango to something approaching Dad, Gad. It was uh, certainly a suspended fourth tuning, but I don't remember exactly um, how I uh, how I set it up. Nevertheless, I sat down with an unfamiliar instrument in an unfamiliar tuning, and let my fingers wander over it and, and be guided by what I found. Now, those of you that have attended my uh, master classes or one-on-one -on -one sessions in the past will know that. I am very much against the idea of just noodling on an instrument. Uh, for me, intent is paramount. And in this case, it wasn't uh, so much noodling as an open-minded uh, exploratory approach. And uh, in this case, it was very effective because suddenly I found myself playing around with this little idea. Uh, before I start, I should say that um, over the years, seeing me on this channel and, and maybe others, uh, you may have come to expect uh, certain sartorial standards. It may come as a shock or indeed as a relief uh, to know that I do a lot of my writing uh, in my dressing gown with a couple of days beard growth on me. Anyway, here it comes.
So there's a lot of lovely stuff there, uh, even in that small idea. Uh, there's a beautiful sort of minor feel to it. Uh, the note choice seemed strong and I was genuinely enjoying working with it, but it was becoming increasingly apparent that I was going to have to uh, move on to the guitar where I have a lot more facility and also uh, there was a wider scope for, for writing in, in the bass and the treble registers. Uh, this was a decision I, I didn't take lightly. If, if I could have stayed on the charango, I would have done. Um, really the most difficult part of that process uh, was abandoning the title uh, Charango Tango, which, um, I mean, titles don't come easy to me, so that, that was, a, uh, <laughs> it was difficult to put down. Now, an important part of moving from Charango onto guitar is, uh, as part of the writing process that may seem kind of counterintuitive, and that is to forget everything that you've done so far. One of the joys of forgetting uh, as part of the process is returning to the piece. And what usually happens is that you'll maintain this sense of intent and this sense of atmosphere for the piece of music, but the melody's long gone. And that's when new ideas start coming to you. And that's exactly what's happened here. Um, you'll see in this next snippet, which was taken just as I was about to leave the house, um, the transition from uh, charango to guitar has completely obliterated the, <laughs> the original idea, but we've gone somewhere else with it. Having captured this first idea, the next part is, is literally to write the next part, and that's not always as easy as it might sound. In this case, it came to me uh, away from the instrument. I was walking through London, and I suddenly started hearing a, a melody. Uh, in situations like that, I grab my phone. I've got an app by Abbey Road Studio. It's called Topline, and uh, I won't inflict the uh, recording on you, but I, I sing the melody into the phone, and then take it back home and, and apply it to the guitar later. And as you'll see in this uh, video that was shot uh, in Oakland, California at the Smodgy Guitars Workshop, the tango has started to progress. As often happens when I visit a luthier's workshop, I returned from Oakland really inspired and suddenly a lot more ideas were coming through for this tango and other pieces as well. However, I found myself coming up against something that I think uh, everybody who creates encounters and that was a feeling of insecurity. In this case, it was a feeling that my tango maybe lacked authenticity. Uh, I didn't want it to be a superficial uh, approach and um, and I wanted to get under the skin of the genre to, to some extent, so I got in touch with uh, Leo Buendia, uh, who's from Buenos Aires and studied tango for many years, and I WhatsApped him the latest video, um, and this was his response. Hermano, impresionante, me encantó, me encantó, un lujo de técnica y un lujo de interpretación, buenísimo. Sometimes all it takes is some gentle encouragement from a trusted friend to get you out of whatever rut you found yourself in. Thank you so much for that, Leo. It meant a, it meant a great deal to me. Uh, this next video was shot in my hotel room in Texas a couple of weeks ago, and you'll see that we're pretty much dealing with a completed idea at this point. In fact, I shot this video, and then a couple of hours later, I performed the piece live for the first time. Thank you. 
Performing a piece in concert for the first time can be nerve-wracking, but it's a vital part of the process as well. And uh, frankly, it's one of my favourite because it gives you connection with the audience for the first time and allows you to see how they respond to what you've written. This video is one of two that I've dropped on my channel today. The second is a complete performance of this new piece, the 5am Tango, and I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay tuned. Mm -hmm.